This is day one of our trip. A little scared, a little worried, but it's gonna be tight. Um, I've always wanted to go kayaking on the St. Joe River since I was a little kid. I grew up in South Bend, and the St. Joe River basically divides South Bend in half. And so it was just something that I always saw. I'd cross it every day, I'd drive across the bridge, and I always saw it. And um, I don't know, it just, I kind of associated the St. Joe River with a, an easy explorational escape. Because um, you would just, you would watch it flow, and it would, you know, you'd see a stick floating by, and then before you knew it, it was all the way down the river, and it would be gone. And I always had this idea, you know, it would be so easy just to jump in a boat and just go where the river takes you. Well, that always, you know, intrigues me because I, I really think that if, you know, if it's possible, I think that I can do it. And so I see things like that and I always try to, I see people push themselves to the next level and um, put themselves in extreme situations and I always think that I can do it too. Dude, the water splashes to the sides. So like, I mean like I that might just take us and throw us into the wall, dude, and back and forth like. This, uh, honestly, this is, I'm, I'm just, I may be a little insane, but that's kind of what made me excited about it. You know? <laughs> I was originally just gonna do this by myself, but I told my buddy, Daniel, that I was gonna do this and I think he got jealous and he wanted to tag along, so he told me he was in. Dan Daniel's, um, He's really skilled, and he's really talented, and he's a very outgoing, ambitious person. So anytime things got rough, he really pushed me and kept me going. And he picked me up, we loaded his stuff in the car, and then we went down to a, uh, a park, and we launched off into the river. First we went through a town and we had to, there's dams so we have to get out of the kayak, go around the dams, because some of these have like, you know, a five, ten feet drop. So there's no way I would go down that in my kayak, my inflatable one. So um, we would go, we went around the dam the first day and then after that first dam we kind of got pushed out into the country. Alright, so that first red circle first red circle right there is the dam we just crossed so it looks like we still have to go all the way through here up there and then right there to freedom it got to the end of the day and we knew that we had to find our goal every day was to find a place to camp before the Sun went down because we knew that being out in the water would be horrible at night and the very first day we lucked out we found a camp, a campground along the river and no one was there and it had a fire pit and it actually had wood chop for us and it was really just seemed odd how perfectly set up it was. The next day is when it got real. We realized what it was we were doing, how far from home we were, um, how far we had to go still, and 
that just got us in a whole different mode. That, I guess that really did get us in survival mode. We, we actually had to go around two dams the second day. After the third one, we were like, all right, we really need to find a place to camp. And we couldn't find anything. And we were like, well, we can pull off, you know, and just camp in the bush, you know, where there's no flat ground, just really rough it. And Daniel told me, he was like, you know, let's just go. Let's, something will happen. There's something up ahead. So last time we were filming, we were running out of light, I ran out of battery, and I ran out of video. And we weren't sure where we were camping or how soon we were going to eat or how soon we were going to sleep. And after about another 20 minutes and another few miles, we found this place. So on the third day, we were like, if we, if we give it all we have, we can make it, we can end this trip. You know, it was about 45 minutes till the sun went down and there's a channel that pushes you about a mile out into Lake Michigan. And it's got walls on both sides and you have to travel down it. And then once you get out, you have to flip around and try and raft a mile back over these gigantic waves. But um, we knew it's crazy because the channel faces west and the, and the sun was setting on us. And we, could, we were watching it go down. We knew that it was a race against the clock to make it there. And it was the most, it was extremely intense. So we paddled our hearts out for, you know, about 45 minutes and then we made it to the shore. I remember making it to the shore and that was the most intense and greatest moment of my entire life because we knew that our long, crazy journey was over and it was like, you know, we had made it, made it to the, to the, you know, to land. I think that this, this trip made me realize that, you know, anytime there's a struggle, it doesn't mean that you have to get pissed off or quit, you know, you can just keep going and gun through it. And, you know, quitting would have just made it harder and would have left me with, regrets and the fact that I finished it and pushed against what felt like all odds at the time um, and made it to the end and that's why it was so rewarding you know finishing this journey that we took.